What is praise? What is praise? For a lot of people, praise and worship are defined by the tempo of the music. So for a lot of us in church, generally speaking, we've come to this conclusion that praise is when the tempo of the music is fast. And worship is when the tempo of the music is slow. I remember sometimes in 1976, 77, I'm sorry, I was invited somewhere in Kaduna to minister and it was actually an Assemblies of God church just near the stadium and uh, the person leading the songs was singing the song, Paul and Silas, they prayed, I mean they sang, they prayed, the Holy Ghost came down. And you know, Assemblies of God is so good with hand clapping, at least then. You know, now it appears the musical instruments have taken over. But in those, you know, early days of ministry, when you get into a church and you engage in praise, the hand claps are so loud and so beautiful. So this man started singing, Paul and Silas, they prayed, they sang, the Holy Ghost came down. Paul and Silas, they prayed, they prayed, they sang, the Holy Ghost. Paul and Silas, they prayed, the Holy Ghost. All right, now let us just worship the Lord. Let's worship the Lord. Paul and Silas, they prayed. They prayed, they sang. All right, now that was the concept. That was the understanding that people had for praise and worship. And it has continued even up till today that we actually think that praise is when the music is fast and worship is when the music is slow. But I just want to help us to know exactly what was in the mind of our creator, our father, when he created this thing, this phenomenon called praise. Please, let's open our Bibles to Psalm chapter eight, and we'll simply read verses one and two. Psalm chapter 8, the book of Psalm chapter 8. Verses 1 and 2. Our key text, the key text is verse 2. However, let's begin from verse 1. And there it says, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth who has set thy glory above the heavens, verse 2, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings has thou ordained strength because of thine enemies that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings has thou ordained strength because of thine enemies that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. A few years ago, someone met me and said, uh, Dr. Panam, I think you should consider yourself to be a little too old now for the music ministry because music ministry, according to the book of Psalm 8 and verse 2, is for babes and sucklings. And the way we see you, you've been here for ages. So you're no longer a babe and certainly you're not a suckling. So please, can you leave this thing and get into pastoring? Since you're a pastor, you're a teacher, allow you know, the young people to do you know, the praise and the worship or the music thing and you can focus on something else. And I thought about it 
after reading this passage, I said, wow, what an amazing uh, understanding, or should I say misunderstanding, that people actually have. So you mean that by age, by reason of age, you can actually outgrow certain responsibilities. And so when you cross the age 30 uh, and cross the age 40 and cross 50 and cross 60, then there are certain things they say you shouldn't do. I was watching Dr. Paul Enenje as, you know, the ministration was going on. His dancing steps were just something else. If you were to be in a competition, I trust you will win. Now, I mean, you needed to see. Oh, you, you guys were not watching. He was, he was totally gone, you know. I mean, the, the, the motion was, I was just watching the steps, you know. And I was like, really? Really? It's a wonderful so I don't know, Pastor Paul, maybe uh, uh, out of the mouth of babes, you're not a babe anymore. So you shouldn't be doing what you're doing at all. At all. You know, you shouldn't be doing that. But you see, there is what I call human intelligence, natural intelligence, and there is spiritual intelligence. And God does not deal with us according to natural intelligence, but deals with us according to spiritual intelligence. Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings has thou, Lord God, ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. In another translation, it says that out of the mouths of babes and nursing infants God has ordained praise out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants God has ordained praise so in this case it means the words praise and strength are synonyms it means they are interchangeable Praise, according to Webster's Encyclopedic Dictionary, is defined as to speak well to someone about another person. To speak well about someone to another person. Or to commend. To commend. To lift up the attributes of someone to another person. So when you say, this man is handsome, it means you're speaking to somebody else about the man. And that is what praise is defined as. If that is praise, let us look at what God our Father had in mind when he made or created this phenomenon called praise. The same verse too, it says, Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength. So why then did God put strength in our mouth? It means that in the spirit realm, in the spirit realm, Things don't happen until they are spoken. Because the power of sound is the power of initiation. is the power that creates, that sets in motion everything in life. If it is not spoken, it does not exist. So when you speak them, that's when they actually happen. So if God says... Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings, he has ordained strength. Let us find out why did he do that. The next line says, because of his enemies. So God ordained strength 
in the mouth of babes because God has enemies. He did not give us praise just for jamboree. He gave us praise because of warfare. So praise has been given to us because God intends to deal with an enemy. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, the Lord has ordained strength because of his enemies. To do what? To steal the enemy and the avenger. The word to steal can also be interpreted as to paralyze or to render immovable. To remove the strength in the life or the body of that entity. So this means that what we simply consider as praise, God Almighty does not see it as a simple thing, but he sees it as a weapon of warfare. Hallelujah. Now, let me use this uh, ushers here to give us an example or explain to us what we mean. Please, can you come over, sir? By your size and your height, I think if you represent God, that will be okay. So this is God in this example. Okay, come on, sir. Can I have someone that is a little bit smaller than this guy? A little bit smaller than this guy? No, you are not smaller than this guy. I need someone smaller. Okay, yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah, come up, come up, come up. Okay, yeah, you actually look smaller. All right. Now, if I ask these two people to fight, do you think there's a balance of power? Is there a balance of power? Certainly not. Certainly not. Because this guy looks very flaky. You know? Now, if I ask this two guys come over God if I ask these two guys to fight I think if this man falls on you you will be crushed so he doesn't need to slap you all he needs to do is wait for an advantage to fall on you and when he falls on you you are crushed so in this example, this man is God. This man here is the babe and the suckling, and that's you, that's me. So come move closer to your father. In this example, this man, let me stay away so that, you know, because we're both wearing white, this man here represents God's enemy. This is the devil. That is Satan. The troubler of your life. The terrorist. This is the man. For this example only. Please. All right. Now, God Almighty, it is ungodly for God to fight with the devil whom he has created because the devil is no match for him there is no way that there will be justice if God should be in the boxing ring with the devil this is a being that created Lucifer or the devil by the words of his mouth so if he wants to deal with this guy, all he needs to do is liquidate his assets by words of mouth. But God did not want to demean himself, bring himself to that level of fighting with a being that he himself created. Instead, he created man who is
is considered a little lower than the angel he made man and said out of the mouth of babes stay in between here out of the mouth of this tiny little babe God has ordained strength that he God through your mouth will paralyze the enemy and the avenger so when we are praising God we are not just having a good time we are fighting it is warfare it is warfare it is not just a jamboree but it is attacking the gates of the enemy so God Almighty did you take away the ordination out of the mouth of this babe and suckling God has ordained strength that he God through this little mouth may still paralyze I call it disarm and defeated to disarm in your English means to take away the the weapons right okay in my understanding it means to remove the arms disarm so disarm put your two arms tie them behind he is disarmed to defeat means to yank the feet D feet D feet get down on your knees because now you have no feet anymore and no arms now sir this is what your praise does to the kingdom of darkness so your praise even though you consider yourself little and small but when praise is engaged in the spirit it reduces the enemy to be disarmed and to be defeated now you as little as you are can slap the devil beat the devil and there is nothing he can do because he has no arms and no feet so the Bible says that your enemy the devil moves around how like a roaring lion he can only roar but cannot harm you cannot hurt you cannot stand you because you have already paralyzed him so now you can slap him try it you can do whatever you want to do with him and there's nothing he can do so ladies and gentlemen the next time you open your mouth and you begin to declare praise I want you to know that the kingdom of darkness will be shivering the kingdom of darkness will be quaking the kingdom of darkness will be suffering from fear because a babe somewhere a baby somewhere has the ordination to use the mouth the Lord did not say use your strength no he did not ordain your muscles but there is another muscle in spiritual intelligence called the mouth that's where your muscle is that's where your muscle is hallelujah now that we understand the picture now that we got it right you may stand up you're not the devil sir you are no longer disarmed you're not defeated you're fixed so go and be the saint of the most high god 
a warrior thank you sir as for you you still remain a babe you're still a babe because out of your mouth there is the power of the most high thank you you sir you still remain the most high you still remain the most high hallelujah hallelujah in the name of jesus go and reign let us open to psalm 149 as we close for better understanding psalm 149 and we will see exactly what praise is hallelujah thank you father thank you lord thank you lord praise ye the lord sing unto the lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of saints let israel rejoice in him that made him let the children of zion be joyful in their king let them praise his name in the dance let them praise his name in the dance let them speak well of him while they are expressing the rhythm let them sing praise to the lord in the dance let them sing praises unto him with timbrel and harp why should we dance why do we dance the reason we dance and the reason we've been instructed to dance is because of the next verse the next verse says for the Lord taketh pleasure in his people he will beautify the meek, the meek with salvation meaning that dancing for a grown-up dancing for a successful person dancing for a king is actually an expression of humility because big boys don't dance in public kings don't dance you know it that kings don't dance but here is the Lord saying that we who have become kings let us praise the Lord in the dance because dancing is an expression of humility so God now says that he will beautify the meek who is able to dance in praise he will beautify you with salvation hallelujah the next verse let the saints be joyful in glory let them sing aloud upon their beds this caught my attention very many years ago caught my attention very many years ago why do we need to sing on our beds when the bed is meant for sleeping so I discovered as I was growing up that so many of us we read the Bible and pray because we want to sleep well without dreaming some nasty dreams and for some of us in church we actually open up Psalm 23 and put the Bible under the pillow and you sleep in the hope that Psalm 23 was going to fight the battle for you so you open the Bible put tuck it under your pillow and you sleep but here there's an instruction sing upon your bed sing aloud upon their bed said let the saints rejoice or be joyful in glory let them sing aloud upon their beds next line sir he said let the high praises of god be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand why how come that while you are singing on your bed it is praise in your mouth but it becomes a two-edged sword in your hand this is because when you are able to transcend with praise from the natural into the spiritual what you are singing as you sing sleep as you sing sleep 
what is a song in your mouth becomes a sword in your hand in the spirit realm that's exactly what it is that's how it is if your eyes are not opened to have this understanding you won't understand exactly what the Lord had in mind and has given to us as weapons of warfare for it has been declared that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal if they are not carnal then they must be spiritual but there are weapons for this warfare the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. So here you are on your bed, you're about to sleep and the Bible says, sing, sleep, sing, sleep. Next verse. When you have transcended with this praise in your mouth upon your bed and you have transcended into the spirit realm, a sword is given to you in the spirit realm. For what purpose? To execute, to execute vengeance upon the heathen, to execute vengeance upon the heathen. That's one. Two, punishment upon the people. Punishment upon the people. Number three, to bind their kings with chains. It means that praise is a chain when it confronts the devil. So the devil is bound by praise. And their nobles with fetters of iron. So here you have chains and that is handcuffs and you have fetters leg cuffs so handcuff and leg cuff ladies and gentlemen the Lord has prepared his kingdom the Lord has prepared his kingdom it is ungodly for a child of God to be afraid but the reason we fear is because we have no knowledge move on sir to execute upon them the judgment written. So judgment has already been written. But it cannot be carried out unless praise is engaged. Unless you begin to exalt God. Talk about God. Not talk about the things that the devil is doing. Not to say, oh, the devil this. Oh, the devil that. No, if you found you were wrong, simply say, I was wrong. I am sorry. Don't give credit to the devil for your failure. You failed out of ignorance. Because if you knew, you will not fail. So failure is an attribute of ignorance. Because if you know, you will not fail. So therefore, don't give credit. Don't ever tell the devil he was able to get you. No. No, he does not warrant that. He should never get credit from your mouth. Everything you do must be given to God. Did you fail? If you did, just say, God, I thank you. Now I know I have failed, but I will no longer remain in this place of failure. Never turn to the devil and say, oh, Satan, you did me evil. No, sir. He is not a contingent in this fellowship. 
and should never be reckoned with at any point in time. The last verse. To execute upon them the judgment written. This honor. This honor. Have all the saints. This honor. What honor? The honor of being able to fight without going to the battlefield. It is an honor to rest on your bed and conquer the enemy. It is an honor to simply use your mouth and incapacitate the kingdom of darkness. Today in Nigeria, we are besieged by all kinds of enemies. They are not coming against you because of you. They are coming against you because of Christ. So the enemy is the enemy of Jesus. He is an antichrist. But ladies and gentlemen, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, the Lord has ordained strength that you may disarm and defeat the enemy and the avenger tonight as we begin to praise the Lord have this picture in mind as we praise God don't just sing but have a picture don't just dance but have this picture in your mind that the hand of the Lord is upon you just like God here laid hands on the babe and infant so the hand of the Lord is upon you tonight and as we engage in praise our praise is going to convert it will change from physical sound to spiritual swords to chains handcuffs and leg cuffs they will be the execution of judgment against the kingdom of darkness stand up right now and tell your brother something good about God tell him what God is or who God is tell him who God is because praise is telling someone telling someone of the attributes of God so tell someone he has done for me he has done for me what my father could not do hallelujah God has prepared us for battle we are now battle axis in the hand of the Lord tonight there's going to be war tonight there's going to be war it is not just going to be war but we are fighting from a vantage point we're fighting from the standpoint of victory because we have already overcome for we overcame the devil how by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony that is the battle axe that is the weapon of warfare hallelujah